HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms Brews and Barbecue event to benefit the Jimmy Fund. We have the latest on Hiller Sports and we'll also let you know what happened during the Greyhound Friends Board of Selectmen public hearing. But first, the Selectmen recognized three town employees for their recent achievements. At this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting, the board started off the meeting by recognizing three town employees for their incredible work, Denise Hildreth, John Neese, and John Westerling. Selectmen will recognize town employee Denise Hildreth, Director of Youth and Family Services, who received the Unsung Hero Award on June 20th, 2018 from the Massachusetts Commission on the Status of Women. Um, thank you. So um, this was an award that was recommended by Representative Dykema. Um, I was able to go to the State House with my husband and receive the award with, I think, 133 other women from across the Commonwealth. Um, you know, very humble women, women in positions of great authority all across the Commonwealth. I think this is just a tremendous honor. So for a social worker, um, to get an award for giving is like getting an award for living. So it's just part and parcel of what we do. Um, we don't often get recognition, and certainly that's not something that um, feels comfortable for me, um, but it's nice to get. So I appreciate your recognizing me and also Representative Dykema for making the recommendation. Denise, um, on behalf of your colleagues at Town Hall, we want to thank you for your fantastic contributions to this community. Uh, your talent, your passion is clearly making a difference. Thank you. Thank you. And next among our honored guests is John Neese. He is our principal assessor, who is the first recipient of the Robert Ella Executive Director, Executive Director Scholarship from the Massachusetts Association of Assessing Officers. The association established an Executive Director Award, which is presented to the assessor who is dedicated to mentoring others through their friendship and leadership. Hello. <clears throat> so I'm very low key, and I don't really like to be recognized, but <laughs> since you made me come tonight, um, thank you. Um, I am one of about 1,200 assessors across the state. Uh, Bob Elia was our first executive director. He has now passed away. The scholarship um, was set up in his honor, and uh, he was one of my mentors, and I am especially proud to be, uh, to be honored by the association. So. But he just does such a great job, and, it's, and, 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 it, and as Brian had said, it's, it's, a, it's a hard job, and to try and keep everybody um, uh, satisfied. You know, and, and still be able to bring bring the money into the town, and really, it, it's because of we, the work that you do is that uh, is one of the reasons why we we consistently stay in the black in this town. So thank you very much. Is our Department of Public Works director, Mr. John Westerling. Uh, John is the president of the New England chapter of the American Public Works Association. The New England chapter received the Presidential Award for Chapter Excellence in recognition of its outstanding contributions and service to its membership, profession, and community. And John is the recipient. Congratulations, John. Through the chair, I was humbled to have received this award um, as the, the chapter president. And first, I want to say that I'm very fortunate to work for a community that allows me to take part in associations like this. So my thanks to the Board of Selectmen and my thanks to the town manager. Um, this was received on behalf of professionals from Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, and over a thousand members. So it was an honor to receive that. Thank you. Thank you. To see our DPW act the way they do 
and get things done and get it done with a smile on her face. The guys are always waving and having some fun out there while they're working, which I love. Uh, I just think you guys and you in particular represent the town well, and I think it's your leadership style that, that makes it happen. So uh, good for you, and, and we're, we're lucky to have you on the team. And I'm excited that you're moving closer to town. I have a little secret on Mr. Wrestling I won't put out there, but I think that's great for us as well, so good for you. The Board of Selectmen hosted a public hearing to discuss if Greyhound Friends shall be granted a new license. Here's a look. On September 6th, 2018, the Animal Control Officer caused an inspection to be conducted on the Greyhound Friends Kennel by Hopkinton Police Lieutenant Joseph Bennett. Hopkinton Police Chiefs Edward Lee, Hopkinton Fire Prevention Officer Thomas Poirier and Timothy Healy. At this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting, the board hosted a Greyhound Friends public hearing. The hearing was held to decide if the selectmen would recommend a new license to Greyhound Friends after their license was pulled following a cease and desist order from the state in January 2017. The Greyhound Friends attorney, Elizabeth Reinhardt, talked about the legal status of the organization. After a four-day trial at which 19 witnesses testified, on December 1st, 2017, Ms. Coleman was declared not guilty. In announcing the not guilty verdict from the bench, Judge David Kunis said, and I quote, while there has been some evidence that Greyhound Friends could have improved the sanitary conditions at the shelter, there is also much credible evidence that the shelter was generally a safe and healthy environment for the dogs. Greyhound Friends has and does adamantly deny any dog was ever mistreated in its care. And I encourage you, please, to review the histories of 10 dogs in your materials as you further consider this issue. Lieutenant Joseph Bennett of the Hopkinton Police Department talked about the findings in the police investigation. All the items listed on the Animal Control Officer's letter dated February 6, 2017, have been repaired, and Greyhound Friends Incorporated Kennel at 167. Uh, Saddle Hill Hopkins Road does not presently meet the standards as outlined in Chapter 62 of our town bylaws. The, the facility is not presently capable of providing a humane and sanitary environment for the kenneling of greyhounds based on their size. <clears throat> when the kennel is, has addressed the identified concerns, a reinspection will be conducted and the recommended kennel capacity of the existing kennel configuration is 10 dogs. The board then heard presentations from the current Greyhound Friends board and staff. And finally, I'm proud of the hard work that we have done in conjunction with the Attorney General's office. Reorganizing our leadership, addressing governance and board concerns, and rewriting our bylaws to reflect best practices for nonprofits in Massachusetts. 35 years ago, Greyhound Friends stepped up to advocate on behalf of this swift and intelligent breed. The organization's historic track record in educating the public and successfully rehoming thousands of these animals is beyond dispute. Greyhound Friends was provided, created to provide an essential bridge from that racing career to many more years as a pet. I would like to adjust to the change of management. How will it be different from before? The biggest change is that Greyhound Friends is no longer controlled by its founder. I will be a paid employee and accountable to the board. My job requires me and all other employees to adhere to all protocols, policies, and procedures governing our kennel. Next was presentations from opposition of Greyhound Friends. Anyway, numerous months went by, Mass Department of Agriculture, State Animal Inspector, and I finally went back to inspect almost eight or nine months later in um, the kennel facility on December 14, 2016. And the kennel facility was found to be in worse condition than most of the recommendations that were supposed to be addressed or corrected by the executive director and the board of directors and their staff were not done. Despite being under the eye of the Attorney General's <coughs> office, Greyhound Friends continued to write new policies and turn around and break them, made misstatements on IRS 990s, perjured themselves on Secretary of State forums, continued to do things that were conf conflict of interest, continued to pay our staff late. These are people who were like working so hard to care for these dogs, some of them working paycheck to paycheck and not getting paid. And then the board heard public comment from both sides. Fact. Greyhound Friends recently released a statement defending their lack of care for Emma, stating that she was impossible to handle. Fact. Greyhound Friends provided another false statement. Now that she is not part of the organization, she is the, she is the founder, but now that she's not part of the organization, I think these people are going to do a wonderful job. 
the Board of Selectmen agreed unanimously that they would not recommend a license be distributed to Greyhound Friends. 30 years we've been trying to fix the problems of Greyhound Friends, and 30 years it's failed. So I have to ask myself, why should an organization that's got it wrong for 30 years still have credibility? Yes, Louise Coleman was the driving force, but there were more people than Louise Coleman, and they saw it, and they, per and they participated. There is complicity here. I know their hearts may have been in the right place, but at the end of the day, the animal suffering continued. You can view much more about this story on our website, hcam.tv. Hopkinton Hillers football got underway this past Friday night as they hosted Wayland in their season opener. Here's a look at how it went. Hopkinton Hillers football hosting Wayland to open the 2018-2019 regular season. Second quarter, Zach Frank gets the call and takes it inside the 10. That leads to this. This time to Brown, who goes straight up the middle touchdown. and in for a touchdown. Matt Brown. The Matt Brown touchdown and the extra point make it seven to nothing Hillers. Later in the second quarter, Kelleher connects with Zach Frank over the middle for a big game. Then a few plays later. Kelleher takes a snap, rolls to his right. He's looking to throw. He's got some. That pass is caught by Luke Deloya in the end zone for a Hopkinton touchdown. That wasn't the only touchdown for Luke Deloya. Keller takes a snap, he drops back, got plenty of time, throws it over the middle again to Deloya, oh, yeah. who breaks a tackle, takes it down the left side, he's going in it looks like. Luke Deloya, Luke Deloya takes it in for the touchdown. Luke Deloya, a 60 yard touchdown reception in the third quarter, would put the Hillers up 20 to nothing, and that's how the score would stay, as the Hillers start off the season 1-0 and with a win over Wayland. Next week, Hopkinton hosts Needham. Still to come on HCAM News, we'll check in on the Hillers field hockey team. Matt Clark has our HCAM insider, and Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms, Brews, and a Barbecue event to benefit the Jimmy Fund. A whole lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hiller Field Hockey is coming off a 2017 season which featured a great playoff run. This year's team is young, hungry, and anxious to earn a spot in the tournament once again. Here's a look at how things have gone so far. I'm Tessa Pagney, I play defense and I'm a senior. I'm Caroline Waters, I play mid and I'm a senior. I'm Kate Wilson, I play defense and I'm a senior. Last season, Hopkinton Hillers Field Hockey finished the regular season with 15 wins, five losses and a tie and earned the TVL crown along with Dover Sherborne. Hopkinton went on to the playoffs and won two games but fell to Somerset Berkeley in the quarterfinals and finished 17-6-1 overall. Despite losing a number of talented players to graduation, this year's captains are ready to go. It's been going well. Um, I'm happy with how we started the season with two wins. We got one of our games canceled, which was sad, but um, it was good to have those two wins to start with and good to get experience with a new team and we're all learning our new positions and how to work with each other, which is good. Um, the team's really close. Friendships are um, bonding throughout the team, so it's really easy to play with them now. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of practice um, gets the team moving forward and the transitioning is getting better. Um, every day we keep working hard and uh, improving our skills. On Tuesday, September 11th, Hopkinton Hillers Field Hockey improved to 2-0 and with a 4-0 win over Bellingham. I caught up with the team captains and head coach after the game. We lost a couple of talented players at graduation from last year, but how is it playing with this group uh, this year? It's been great. I mean, it's always sad to lose the seniors um, every year, but getting new players is so awesome. And like seeing the younger kids who are, like, have so much talent, it's just like really exciting to be playing with them and see how much potential they have for like the years to come. I asked the captains about their goals for the season. Um, I hope to have a few goals and assists throughout the season, um, considering I'm playing midfield. 
Yeah. Um, a big goal for me is, as a captain, being a team leader and uh, keeping motivation up and keeping everyone um, positive throughout the game. For the team, I'm hoping we make it a few rounds into tournament this year. That'd be great. Yeah. And TV LGMs, hopefully. Hey, coach, uh, nice win out there against uh, Bellingham today. Uh, can you talk about your team's performance today? Well, today they look great. They, we started off, I thought it was a little slow starting off. Um, we scored our first goal and there was no turning back after that first goal. I, every player on the team played today and they seemed to do really well with different, you know, different players playing different positions. I was very proud of them. And how's it uh, coaching this group this year? Oh, it's an awesome group. I, it's a really nice group. We had a, um, a play day down the Cape over the weekend and I could just see the team camaraderie and just how they got together. And I feel like off the field they click, and so that will transfer to on the field they'll click. All right, terrific. Uh, what are you going to be working on in the next few days of practice? Next few days we're going to be working on our hits, basically our hits on the move. And I, we have some really good stick handlers. I'd like the rest of the team to join them in that really elite stick handler position. All right, Coach, well, okay. we're looking forward to the rest of the season. Great, thanks. Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event to benefit the Jimmy Fund Walk. Leading up to the event, Weston Nurseries had raised over $90,000 for the Jimmy Fund. This past weekend's event was a success and a good time was had by all. Here's a look. Weston Nurseries hosted their second annual Blooms, Brews, and Barbecue event this past Saturday. The proceeds will be donated toward the annual Jimmy Fund Walk. Leading up to the event, Weston Nurseries had raised over $90,000 for the Jimmy Fund. So, uh, great turnout here today. We're in just about the middle of the event. Uh, how's everything going so far? Well, very well. It's uh, a little past the halfway point about four o'clock and I think we've had a lot more people than last year which is good the uh, event last year was tremendous raised a lot of money I think we're gonna we're gonna beat that this year yeah a lot of families a lot of kids a lot of pets it's been a pretty oh my great gosh, day pets. <laughs> so I think we puppies. have to I think we have to call this a pet event yeah. this year. <laughs> a lot of dogs but yeah I'm glad the family showed up the kids have plenty to do we got cornhole we got giant Jenga yep. Um, Connect Four. Connect it's Four, a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. uh, once in a while you hear this big bang and all of a sudden it's because the Jenga board collapsed. Yep. It's scary, and right? kids run, around, run, run away. Yep. Run away. <laughs> and this is uh, you know, Samantha Rose from the Jimmy Fund and, and you've had a lot of people enter the raffle yep. prizes uh, here. Yep, today. so our opportunity drawing. So far we've sold $350 worth of tickets, okay. which is great. Um, got some great prizes and I think we'll still sell some more. Yep, and we'll announce those around 5 o'clock. Yep. And a few people had signed up for the walk team. Yep. We got about 10 or 11 so far, and our goal is to raise $25,000 this year. Yep. Hopefully, we beat that. So, anyway, this is a great event. We're in the middle of it, and we can't wait to do it next year. But Tom will show some B roll to give the effect of what it's like. We got a lot of beer vendors here, they're all doing very well. Yep. People are having fun. It's, it's not out of control. No. It's uh, got a great band playing. Great band. I think we're on the third out of fourth bands. And uh, the food is phenomenal, too. Yes. So I think we'll try to keep it kind of similar to this next year. I think, yeah. Working I good. think that's a good plan. <laughs> so that's it. All right. Terrific. And uh, how's everything going over here at the donation table? It's good. We're getting a lot of gifts, a lot of people interested. And a lot of people just want to give to the Western Nurseries Walk Team such devotion, which is just amazing. And I think a true testament to what you guys have done here is a look at the fun-filled day of music, great food, tasty beverages, and a good time for the whole family. Bye. 
A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, September 14th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Pam Leachfield about this weekend's Holly Arts Festival on a brand new episode of Hopkin and Coffee Break. On Monday, September 17th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, September 18th at 8 p.m., the Hopkinton residents look back on memories of the now decommissioned Center School Building on a brand new HCAM TV special. On Wednesday, September 19th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a brand new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, September 20th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, September 21st at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls volleyball team takes on the Norwood Mustangs, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers football versus Martha's Vineyard game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, Thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
Hopkinton Hillers football hosting Wayland to open the 2018-2019 regular season. Second quarter, Zach Frank gets the call and takes it inside the 10. That leads to this. This time to Brown, who goes straight up the middle touchdown. and in for a touchdown. Matt Brown. The Matt Brown touchdown and the extra point make it seven to nothing Hillers. Later in the second quarter, Kelleher connects with Zach Frank over the middle for a big game. Then a few plays later, Kelleher takes a snap, rolls to his right. He's looking to throw. He's got some. That pass is caught by Luke Deloya in the end zone for a Hopkinton touchdown. That wasn't the only touchdown for Luke Deloya. Keller takes a snap, he drops back, got plenty of time, throws it over the middle again to Deloya, oh, yeah. who breaks a tackle, takes it down the left side. He's going in, it looks like. Luke Deloya, Luke Deloya takes it in for the touchdown. Luke Deloya, a 60-yard touchdown reception in the third quarter, would put the Hillers up 20 to nothing, and that's how the score would stay as the Hillers start off the season 1-0 with a win over Wayland. Next week, Hopkinton hosts Needham. I'm Tessa Pagney. I play defense, and I'm a senior. I'm Caroline Waters. I play mid, and I'm a senior. I'm Kate Wilson. I play defense, and I'm a senior. Last season, Hopkinton Hillers field hockey finished the regular season with 15 wins, 5 losses, and a tie, and earned the TVL crown along with Dover Sherborne. Hopkinton went on to the playoffs and won two games, but fell to Somerset Berkeley in the quarterfinals and finished 17-6-1 overall. Despite losing a number of talented players to graduation, this year's captains are ready to go. It's been going well. Um, I'm happy with how we started the season with two wins. We got one of our games canceled, which was sad, but um, it was good to have those two wins to start with. and. Good to get experience with a new team, and we're all learning our new positions and how to work with each other, which is good. Um, the team's really close. Friendships are um, bonding throughout the team, so it's really easy to play with them now. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of practice um, gets the team moving forward, and the transitioning is getting better. Um, every day we keep working hard and uh, improving our skills. On Tuesday, September 11th, Hopkinton Hillers Field Hockey improved to 2 and 0 with a 4 nothing win over Bellingham. I caught up with the team captains and head coach after the game. We lost a couple of uh, talented players at graduation from last year, but how is it playing with this group uh, this year? It's been great. I mean, it's always sad to lose the seniors um, every year, but getting new players...